Hello, dear friends. We're talking with the Kabbalist, Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello, everyone. I'd like to talk about the origin of the virus. Some say that it comes from animals, bats, then pets. Then it was said that it's because of the melting of icebergs. Maybe the viruses come from there. Now it's because we're invading the Amazon virus, uh, the Amazon, and even people on remote islands get infected with the virus. Bats don't go there. So the question is, scientists, serious scientists are starting to think, where is it coming from? Right. What is its origin? What do you think? Out of thin air? Not even out of thin air, thin air out of nothing. Uh, out of nothing, what does that mean? Can you explain, please? Because we ourselves are the source of viruses. Man, human beings, that's the most hazardous animal on Earth. That, uh, that Earth still stands. Bears. Because in the process of our growing ego, since we relate to each other with more and more disregard, rejection, by that we awaken such negative forces in nature that bring about things called viruses. So the virus comes as a result of our thoughts and actions against other people. Right. Our thoughts, our desires, meaning the forces acting between us that we generate, at the end of the day, they generate such uh, they, they create such matter that we call virus. So scientists won't find, well, here it is, start with treating each other favorably. There will be no viruses, and even those that exist will disappear. These will eat those. But for scientists, it's, it's too high for scientists because it is on the level of desires, yearnings, relations, things that scientists can attain. They work in labs. They work on the level of matter. This is on the level of subtle matter, desire, love, hate, fears, and so on. Can you imagine a doctor writing out, uh, giving a person uh, some, uh, you know, if you treat each other favorably, you'll be cured giving a person this kind of prescription. And then a person goes to a pharmacy and he's uh, been given, he's being given, he's being directed to some group where he corrects his attitudes, his relations with others. That's it. That's the prescription. So still, we have to, if we won't be engaged in this, study these things, we won't even understand what's going on. But here we're rising to a level where we rise from matter to the next level. The level of desires, thoughts, relations, meaning subtle matter. This is where viruses and antiviruses come from, everything's there. Right. All of matter is created there altogether, all of it. So you, you rise to the cockpit that controls our world. Of course, why not? Thought. Thought generates everything. Yeah, thought generated all of the created all of nature altogether. At first, there was nothing. But this way, we cancel all all sciences. Not at all on their level. They're absolutely true. 
Yeah, but they can't find an antidote. They can't find it on their level. What can you do? So a doctor has to become a sage? Meaning, a contemporary sage can be a doctor. Or does a doctor have to understand that it's all on the next level? He has to work on his earthly level. So what does he heal? He, to a certain extent, can somehow protect us, give us something, strengthen us, but the cure to the virus, there will come a second and third wave and more, and we'll see that it all depends only on our thoughts, on what we feel, on our attitude toward each other. So your main advice is, not to fly to any deserted islands, it won't help. The only thing that will help is think positively about others. It's a very simple kind of advice for a person. You know, it's possible to realize it, but he says, look, Dr. Leitman, I, I see you as a sage, but the, the advice is so simple that I, I don't even want to realize it. Think nicely about others. This is what they told us in kindergarten. And it was correct and true. If we could absorb this, accept it, what our kindergarten teacher taught us, that also didn't understand or know anything about it and didn't follow it, but she told us about this. Because for her it was good when we were calm and treated each other favorably. What secret is there here in thinking about others favorably? Our thoughts control the world. Can I think favorably about others? No, there's something that you have to learn how to do. So there is a secret. Of course. It's like you knew that there is like this fishka here. There is. Yeah, but still, what, what is the secret? I can't favorably think about others. And it's done so on favor that you can't because your attitude toward others depends on the direction of your thoughts desires, interactions with others, your mutual work with others. Many such conditions that you have to generate yourself in your environment, at least in a small group. And until I do that, we'll be under the threat of viruses. And not only. Is it possible to do this in a short period of time because humanity is ill? doesn't matter, ill or not. Coming at us are an, an enormous legions of viruses. And they really want to grab us. You know, humanity doesn't like people that give bad news. Yeah, in the past they were burned. So can you give something positive to add something positive? Can we start somehow getting rid of them? How, much, how long will it take? Mm, no. We can we can decrease their hazardness, we can postpone certain problems until we grow wiser, but it depends on the measure to which now we will start working with them, taking them into consideration, trying to make it so that these viruses will be really correctly perceived by us, that with their help we will be directed at the right goal. So this is what it is about, We're, what are they aiming us at? Yeah. Can you give several steps? What, what do I have to understand? I have to understand that it's to my benefit, it's for me, it's not against me. There is nothing in nature against people at all, only in order for us to grow wiser and change a bit, mature a bit, change for the better in our relations toward each other and nature. And if I start understanding that, 
Then you get healthy. Physically, you start feeling psychologically, physically healthy. And this protects us from the viruses. You don't have to protect yourself from anything. It starts helping instead of killing. Yeah, in nature, there is no evil. There's nothing threatening or anything. You know, all of our clips about viruses that got plenty of views, they all the time lead to that to see this virus as something that directs us, that came with a positive thought or well, we'll suffer some more until we will understand. What can you do? We'll have to understand this one way or another. Okay, suppose I understand this. I want to understand it. I make all possible efforts. By this we shift a completely different level of thinking. We'll start building computers out of viruses. This is a first. It doesn't matter. Our entire life will be on that level, based on our interactions, thoughts, positive, negative. That, that's all there is in nature, plus and ni- minus. What do you have in this box with a screen? Only plus and minus that interact. And the very same way for us, we'll be able to control this by our thoughts, by our desires. Very simple. So then I shift to a completely different level of thoughts. You don't need words. You don't need nothing. There is nothing physical at all. Suddenly we discover ourselves in the tremendous realm that's completely filled with plus and minus. These kinds of particles, thoughts, feelings. Are there minuses there? There can't be plus without a minus. Has to be. And the minus is a kind of a resistance of mind to the plus. It has to exist. And and like we learn in the wisdom of Kabbalah, we don't get rid of the ego. We only use it correctly. So I come to the understanding that I'm an egoist and I learn how to use it. Everything remains. I don't stick my hands into nature. I reveal this tremendous computer that we exist in and I start interacting with it with the help of my thoughts, desires. And we integrate into the work of this computer, bringing it to a state of complete equilibrium that it will reveal to us the general equation of creation, that all of this exists only in order for us to reveal the good. So the world of good is prepared for us, we only have to reveal it. We talked about that too. <laughs> how long do we have to repeat? The, how long are you willing to repeat this, to go back to this all the time? For how long? As long as I live, that's life. So you have the patience for it, and you're going to continue doing it. Yes. During this pandemic, what did the pandemic show us? That no one needs jewelry. The market of jewelry completely collapsed. Well, there's nothing about them besides the the importance that people attribute to them. Yeah, suddenly people understood that all they need is something to wear, something to eat, and all these things that he used to wear to show how pretty he is. It, it, it decreased by ten times and more. I know I have students and I have people that I know not the diamond exchange, nothing, dead. People are buying here and there, but only if he wants to give someone a special present and you have money, then people still buy stuff. But 
the prices fell rap- by seven, nine, ten times. They'll have this more or less normal value. Meaning, there is something attracting about about jewels, you know, it's about these stones, the light, the things, but what else is there? I was thinking, it's just a piece of glass. It is? But what is there about them? Why did people buy them for so much? Because it's rare. You have to dig it out of the ground. We're not talking about artificial diamonds. You get it out of the ground. It's very hard to do it. You have to polish it. And as a result, it costs lots of money. What is there about them? Nothing. That it's shiny. Kabbalistically wise, nothing. It's only that people attribute importance to it. That's what's interesting. You took a piece of paper and you attributed, you gave it a certain price. This is what they wanted to do instead of uh, the dollar being connected to gold to make it out of paper, instead of gold having it in paper. You have bread and you have diamonds. A person chooses bread. Of course, people will give everything for money. And this bread, is uh, it has a worth because life is the most important thing. Still, I want to understand, why was it done so from above, by the upper force? For people to stop determining values the way it seems to them in this world. So, this was our God. Yeah. Why are we directed? I mean, so much blood was shed, there were wars because of this. Humanity needs something, something that is worth a lot of money, that you can keep, that you can inherit. There has to be some kind of value in life. I'm gone, that's it. I'm dead, what then? How do I introduce, I have to invest, I have to put my value into something. So it's terrible. Yeah, I put it in there and I give, I pass it on to my grandchild. And it helps him in everything because I'm passing on to him something that is valued by everyone. So I'm passing on power this way to him, of course. And today, all of our values are being re-examined. Uh, and where is this going? That there is nothing valuable in life beside, besides thoughts. Again, we're coming to what we talked about. Yeah, I continue. That besides the thoughts that you can pass on to your grandchild, there is nothing valuable in the world. But using your thought, he really acquires worth. What is a thought? I mean, you know, it's like something empty. But by that, he acquires something that exists eternally and no one can steal it or do anything about it. That's the main the main treasure in relation to people, your your inner wealth. It's worth more than any diamond. Will a person be able to refuse to take a diamond? Probably these are the times, right? To, to refuse taking a diamond, saying, no, this isn't the main thing. In our time, we're coming to um, serious re-examination of our values. 
meaning things that were valuable for me, things that I fought for this, that, generation after generation. I tried to pass it on to others. All this today is losing its worth. It's worthless. So we will come to a place where not the the diamond will be will cost something, but what life, death, what only the thought, the right attitude toward the world. It's the main thing. But isn't it kind of abstract for a person? What does a person have if uh, if he lives and dies that's not abstract? Then the most worthy thing is something that he can take from one state where he's alive to the other state where he dies. And this is something that he can take with him? Of course, the thought, this is what stays with him. What kind of thought should we generate? A positive attitude toward the world and everyone. That doesn't go anywhere. This stays with you forever. Because it's not in your ego that dies together with the body. But it's an altruism and the good relations that you have acquired throughout your corporeal life. And then you fly away with it into a new realm. The realm of positive forces. And to live this way and think this way, if we'll be able to pass this on to our children, we exist in order to accumulate these kinds of positive emotions, thoughts, and so on. Yearnings. And to go with that. They exist in that realm around us. This way we relaunch the entire spiritual into the entire spiritual realm. So when I leave, what do I give to my children, grandchildren? I leave this world passing on to the measure to which I could a positive attitude toward the world, toward people, toward life, for my children and grandchildren, and to everyone. And you see this as your task. Of course, but that's my opinion. And it's the opinion of all Kabbalists in all generations. Of course. Everyone's writing terrible, it's hate, it's this. It's pushing us to, for us to reevaluate what is it that we have to get out of our life, collect and pass on, teach to the next generation. How to shift into positive thoughts, thoughts, good thoughts. Everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. These four months went by very quickly. And practically, there were no positive news, practically. There were viruses, then there was there were storms, uh, earthquakes, fires. It was all kind of in the background of this virus, but it did happen. In Iran, they're developing the A-bomb again. And the Muslim revolution started working again. Look what's going on in the United States. There are gangs that are looting. No good news. A person's living in this realm. How should a person live his life? And he's being inflated with this news all the time. Maybe to give good news or what? Why should we be concerned with this altogether? Why control man with the help of these of this different news? To the contrary, all of this news teaches him to be uh, teaches him to uh, excessive. Uh, this is his worldview to use things excessively, teaches him cruelty, that the world's terrible, that's how he perceives it, he himself becomes that way. 
And we see it according to the growth of crime and so on in the world. So now you're looking from the point of view from the mass media that feeds a person with that, but how should a person live with it? It exists. How should he perceive these things? What do you mean, how should we live with it? This is the only news around me, only bad news. What am I supposed to do? Lock myself at home, hide on some island, turn off all the mass media. I perceive all of this as a result of man's influence on nature, on the surrounding world. A person generates these viruses, suppose, and these this way, they affect everything around us and the world and the cosmos altogether. We do it all in man. So, I'm a simple person. I'm a simple person. Yeah, I read all these things, I see, I, this is what I'm fed with. I do all these things. I do all these things. This is how I was brought up. This is the situation I was put into. I, I, I do what? My negative attitude toward nature, toward the world, toward others, that I want to blow all of this up or at least use it all to my own benefit. By this, I create tremendous negative a tremendous negative impact on the world that in return brings it all back to me. And that's how we live. The world affects me negatively and I affect the world negatively. But a person doesn't live with this thought. He thinks that someone there, they're bad. He doesn't think that he's bad. Someone thinks that he's bad and uh, that others are bad and others think that I'm bad and... Exactly, we think this about each other. You won't be able to convince a person that I'm responsible for all these wars, poverty, what's going on in the United States, I bring about all these viruses. Simple advice for a person how to live with all this terrible news that was brought upon him. Let's at least make it so that people around the world will go into a week of positive thoughts. That would be good. And let's see, let's examine to what measure, what kind of impact does it have, how does it influence the surrounding world, influence us. Only positive thoughts, that's it, not to do anything else. Think only positively about others. And you think that that would work if we, if for a week we could be that way? Let's try. What do we have to lose? Of course, we, we don't have anything to lose, but to, to hold an entire week in these thoughts very hard. Let's suppose. And you think that that would clear the air? How much will gain in terms of saving on gas, energy, what we do to the atmosphere, everything? Let's go. You turn to humanity now, but to a simple person. What? A person has to go out and start yelling that let's organize this kind of week. For a person to take upon himself to say, I want to live in a week of good thoughts, of course. And if all people will do that, we'll do this for a week, it'll clean ecology, our life, everything. Of course. Let's go. Oh, science fiction, it's nice to think this way, but still, talking to a simple person, should he lock himself at home or not? The problem is that as follows. It doesn't cost anything. No one has to invest anything into it. We don't have to stop anything. We simply have to continue living this way, meaning throughout this entire week, we will talk only about our good relations. Let's try. Nothing else. 
And how much can we gain from that? In terms of saving lives, accidents, murder, many things. We have the statistics. Suddenly we'll see. What are we doing if we just try to say good things? How to organize these kinds of things? Is it organized from above? Of course, by the government, by the UN, by the Ministry of Health, this, that, UNESCO. Meaning to stop their political games and say, okay, let's try for one week to to be that way. Of course. And the mass media will be engaged in that, will throw all of our money into that. You don't have to throw anything into anything. It's sort of, you know, ordinary stuff. The thing is that they won't want to do it. Because immediately what we'll find out that we don't need anything besides that. What do we need all the governments for? What do we need the mass media for? What do we need it for? Excellent, we won't pay anyone anything. We won't have to sustain anyone. Everything's going to be nice. So that's working against us, that's what they'll say. Yeah, of course. So there's always this turning point in the end where you say that it's impossible. You're saying, let's do it, but then immediately you say it's impossible. It's possible, but impossible. Meaning no one will go for it. Then... What is our advice, practical advice then? There is no practical advice. The ego will not allow us to do it. So you think that this will is the only thing that will help us, but the ego won't allow us to do this. So again, it's a dead end. Please, what can we do? What do you want from me? What am I, Moses, leading the people? But still, somehow, let's solve this. You're saying this is the way out, the week of good thoughts, but no one's going to go for it because we have to. The governments, this, that, we don't need all of that. All of our... we we then have to cancel all of our egoistic relations. We'll see the measure to which we're facing, we're standing face to face with this great big ego and we have no idea what to do. What are we going to do without it? It's so dear and precious to us. So we want for this week of good thoughts to come, but we're facing our ego that's telling us you'll never be able to do it because then you have to cancel me. And it's good, the situation is good, of course it's good, then at least we'll advance somewhat, we'll understand what's standing in our way in this life, but we won't be able to do it. Still, how should we summarize this? We have to try and explain this to the measure to which that if worse times will come, viruses, second time, third time, it'll bend us and we'll agree at least to take these half measures. So to talk about what's impossible now and you yourself understand that it's impossible, but it's necessary to do this. To talk about the good attitude of people toward each other, a week of good thoughts. One way or another, things will come to that. Meaning eventually the ego will surrender? No, no, there's, it's got, there's going to be a tremendous inner war, a spiritual war of forces. It's going to be the war of the dark against the forces of light. This is the war of Armageddon. It's exactly the fight against the ego, good deeds versus the ego. Yeah. And what will happen at the end? At the end, the forces of good will prevail, but only after a tremendous inner war that people have to experience inside themselves. Every person. Everyone from the 8 billion people, yes. 
It's pretty, it's nice. Yeah, so you're saying that the scenario is already there. This is the scenario that we'll have to follow. But it's already written, not in its final version. There's such scenes there where I have freedom of choice. Yes, that I have to choose something, of course. I'm the commander here. And the most critical scenes, not in general that everything's headed toward victory of the forces of good over the forces of bad. But all the turns, special states, were the ones that determine all of these things. So I'll be in this uh, situation all the time. Every moment we'll have to give a solution out of our own free choice and put pressure for it to be realized. Everything will depend on us, uh, even though that everything's predetermined. That's uh, beautiful, but it's very unclear to a common person. So what? We'll get there. So a person will go with this feeling that it's good for the light to prevail, to cons- he'll constantly collide with the darkness, understanding that he won't be able to defeat it and will continue somehow. Of course, and we will grow like sprouts out of the ground in our new form. And what is this new form? An altruistic society. It's not even a society of the corporeal form like we think. It's a completely different form of things. It's like a kind of birth, a completely different kind of birth. And will exist in it in the way of thoughts, desire. You're saying like a child uh, is born upside down. This is the turning upside down. Yeah, the understanding that I'll never be able to make it. Suddenly things turn upside down and I'm there. Are we drawn there? Is there like a midwife or something? Of course, it's all done by nature, by the upper nature. It pushes us, gives birth to us. So we only have to make the effort. We have to correspond to it. Very deep clip. It'll all happen very quickly, unnoticed, and all these viruses, they will accompany us until our new birth. So the viruses are actually a pushing force. Yes, they form us, they do everything. Like like a baby is formed inside his mother and and they push us out. The main thing is not what they biologically do in our world, but that they give birth to our new relations, new perception. This is the main thing. In short, everything's going to be fine. By the way, this is how we end all of our clips. Вот давайте эту новость, хотя я хотел сейчас... Давайте, ладно. Э, Вот в результате пандемии... As a result of the pandemic, farmers were really affected by this. No labor force, no one to go to the field to collect the crops. And this is the solution they're finding. It's good to grow crops on the roofs of tall buildings and in apartments. This is a new trend in Europe and the United States. It's called city farmers. You save on, you know, having to deliver things to the city, 
You don't need a place, you don't have um, energy. All you need is air, lead lights, a little water, and that's it. So people started growing everything in basements, on roofs. What do you think about this solution? Fine, it's good. I'm all in favor of it. I think that it's an excellent solution to get out of the situation. Otherwise, what can we do? There's nothing we can do, and everything's fine. So you save everywhere, and actually you can start. It's going to be something official. These farmers have to prove that their products are better and cheaper than this one. Well, this is how it's going to be for sure. Some will make something, someone will make something else, will grow something else, and it's going to be sold uh, from small local warehouses and distributed from there, I don't know. And will release the fields and very good, more air. Let us have more parks instead. Well, it was, uh, it was just interesting to me. I have a few more minutes, so if you can say what you think about these things from the point of view of Kabbalah. Buddha says, if you truly love yourself, you can never hurt others. Well, it's un- you can't realize it. Meaning, if you really love yourself and understand the integral world that you're living in, then you won't do harm to others, because this way you are harming yourself. Why did you connect loving yourself with the integral world? It's something very egoistic to love yourself. Well, if the world's integral and you make a negative impact on it, it all comes back to you. So I feel that it comes back to me. Of course. So if I love myself, I won't do harm to others because it'll all come back to me. Yeah, if the world's integral, then to yourself or others, it's when the same. Same in the wisdom of Kabbalah? Of course. And if I do something bad to others, loving myself, is it an option? If I do bad things to others, then this way I I do bad to myself. So it's a boomerang. The world is a closed system. It's round. Happiness will never come to those who are not grateful for what they already have. Well, it's also actually kind of true. I I have to be grateful no matter what. I'm in the worst possible state still. I have to rise to the level of being grateful. Gratitude is a necessary condition in order to feel good, feeling the light. Still, can you explain? Well, it depends on, on the way you look at the world. Why are things that bad? You have to try and rise above that. Meaning in such a state, I have to reach, I have to be grateful. Yes, gratitude has to be in any state, even a second before you die. All prayers begin with gratitude, of course. If you don't have this kind of attitude, then who are you praying to? 
Представляете вообще, это вообще состояние, конечно. This this is an exalted state. I can be grateful no matter what happens, no matter what I experience. Yeah, but that's because you divide yourself into two parts, light and dark. And this is how it is, a person is divided into these two parts. Okay. Our time is almost up. Thank you very much.